away, can't you? <laughs> Excellent. Um, well, uh, I would like to introduce myself briefly for those of you that I haven't met. My name is Natalie and I am the Regional Archaeologist for the National Trust for Kent and East Sussex, and now for a tiny bit of West Sussex as well. So what I'm going to be talking to you about today is some of the work we've been doing over the last few years on uh, graffiti and inscriptions at National Trust sites. Um, I've taken the, the definition of coastal quite broadly, just to let you know. Um, and we're going to be talking about uh, one of the sites at the end of the talk is going to be at the White Coast of Dover. So we're just starting here with a picture of Lara and Lawrence on a, a field visit last year. Um, and I hope, well, I hope you enjoy. Can everyone hear me okay? Excellent. Okay, so in a bit of a cheeky way, because I'm also in terms of discovering frog, and we are in London, I wanted to, to sort of set some of the themes of what I'm going to be talking about today uh, with a couple of examples from uh, the Thames waterfront of graffiti. So we want to be thinking about things around sort of personal expression and artistic expression. Um, views that we may find challenging, uh, that are expressed in uh, graffiti that is left on the waterfront. So the picture that's just come up is from the uh, Bankside waterfront, um, and uh, it's actually over an inscribed plaque, so it, it's quite interesting. It's not there anymore. So the other thing uh, that I wanted to consider today was the, the sort of permanence or otherwise of the different kinds of graffiti. Uh, the age of the graffiti as well, can we tell how old these things are? If someone has helped me left as a date, then yes. Uh, but sometimes we don't know. So this is an example from the Tower Beach and is at the bottom of one of the stairs that Angela mentioned earlier, which is now inaccessible. So this is under the Tower Hall. And it seems to have been a popular place to inscribe your name after you've come downstairs. So people are creating a memento or adding their mark uh, once they have achieved their sort of uh, their time on the foreshore. Um, also, I, I mentioned the sort of ephemeral nature of uh, foreshore and waterfront graffiti. This is a chalk inscription that's on the walls of Greenwich, um, which we've also heard mentioned today. Uh, it, and it obviously says, We love our mummy. Um, so there's some, some deep uh, emotion being expressed there. It's not my children, I'm just wasting <laughs> time, not need this one. Uh, but it's only a, a chalk inscription, so it's not there anymore, and actually it's been replaced and replaced and replaced again. It's a very popular place to leave your mark, actually, the, the Riverside Hall in Greenwich. Sometimes as well, uh, we, we're looking at things that reflect a much wider perspectives, so we're looking at graffiti that relates to uh, global views or, or current uh, trends. This is a particularly unfortunate <laughs> one <laughs> for me personally. Um, it's obviously not about me, I would just like to add at this point, but this is a widespread, if we excuse the expression, viral graffiti <laughs> that has gone all over the world. And this was recorded on the Thames uh, waterfront by Lara Maitland, who uh, also posts under the name London Mudlark, and has re recently written a book about all the kinds of things she's been picking up on the foreshore. <laughs> until relatively recently. 
So the barn had been previously surveyed for its structure, and we understood a little bit about its use and its construction, but it wasn't until Archaeology Southeast were doing a watching group there a couple of years ago that they actually spotted these ship graffiti on one of the barn uh, walls. So Winchelsea is a, is a, uh, a fascinating site. Uh, for those of you who don't know it, the National Trust owns a large number of um, properties in uh, and around the town of Winchelsea, which is new Winchelsea. So old Winchelsea was washed away in the 13th century and now lies uh, beneath the sea. So this is a new planned medieval town. And ships seem to feature quite frequently in the archaeology uh, of the fabric of the town and its buildings. So as well as these ships in uh, Wickham Manor Farm, Barn. We also have medieval ships inscribed on the walls of uh, the church in the centre of the town. And we have medieval ships recorded uh, in the cellar of Blackfriars Farm, which is one of the National Trust owned uh, cellars in the town. The town is quite famous for being uh, planned on a grid and it has a huge number of sub uh, basement storage areas. Now, Blackfriars Barn is particularly interesting, the cellar there, because it's a huge uh, building, it's three chambers, and we're not really sure that it was just being used for storage, um, particularly because one of the chambers has a fireplace in it, so maybe not ideal for storing wine. Again, a very late uh, sort of discovery within this cellar was the discovery of incised uh, ship graffiti on the wall, incised into wet plaster, which again is quite unusual. So here we can see uh, Matthew Champion um, of medieval graffiti fame recording some of the uh, ship graffiti with Richard Camotto from the Winchelsea Archaeological Society. So Matt's uh, photographic survey has helped us to see, uh, that's a reworking, but essentially we have a, a, a fleet of ships. Uh, they all seem to have been drawn uh, or inscribed at the same time. They overlap each other. They are quite unusual in that they're quite large for ship graffiti. So the central large one that you can see, that black one, is about a metre in height. So they are, um, they are interesting and they are unique, as far as we know, for the medieval period. Um, here is the Winchelsea Archaeological Society drawing, which sort of pulls out um, some more of those details. So we can date them by the, the type uh, of ship they are. So it's 14th century seems the most likely candidate. They seem to have been incised on the walls, inscribed on the walls, not long after the construction of the cellar uh, itself. And we wonder what, what the meaning is here. So one suggestion that we have is that Winchelsea obviously is a port town. People would have seen ships like this coming and going. And in 1350, there was a very large uh, sea battle right off the coast um, next to Winchelsea. Um, and we, we, one suggestion is that, that what they're drawing is a massing of the fleet here that were heading out uh, to that sea battle, which Wikipedia tells me would look exactly like this. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the view from uh, Wickham Manor Farm. So we're looking uh, out to sea here. And this is an area I mentioned already that the town of Old Winchelsea was in the way. This is an area of a huge amount of coastal change. Uh, this is the 17th century map of the area, and you can see we've got Winchelsea down here, looking out over Rye Bay, as it was, and you've got Oxley Island at the top here. Just up to this corner here, you would find the site of Bodium Castle. This is a little bonus site. Um, I'm counting it as part of the maritime cultural landscape, a really long way in, but it is on the river and it is the navigational uh, head of the robber. This is Bodium in 2015. Uh, that is our overflow car park, pun intended. Um, and you can see what just what a sort of watery landscape this is. Now, we've also undertaken uh, with Matthew and with James Wright uh, a graffiti survey at the castle, over 600 inscriptions recorded, everything from masons' marks, medieval texts, ritual protection marks, a huge amount of visitor graffiti, tourist graffiti, uh, including this one. <laughs> so, this just raises the question for me, this is obviously very much of its time, um, you have to have seen the TV series to understand uh, why that is funny, but it does raise the question, you know, 
that comes up a lot with graffiti studies. How old does graffiti have to be to be interesting? Should we be preserving 20th century graffiti? If it's funny, does that make it better? Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is not a National Trust site, but I, I hope that you sort of make the point there. So um, there's lots of different approaches that, and thoughts that we can have about looking at uh, graffiti, historic and otherwise. Moving slightly downriver, so I, I mentioned the Isle of Oxney earlier. And at the very top of the Isle of Oxney, we have the site of Small Pies. And again, this is a, a National Trust property. We have uh, Small Pie Place at the bottom here. This is the Barn Theatre. Uh, and this is the Priest House, which is a, a tenanted property. So we've also looked at all the graffiti in those uh, structures. Um, and also worth noting that uh, Small Pipe has been previously investigated by none other than the mighty Time Team, um, and none other than uh, Damien Goodberg, who is right in this room now. He didn't know Damien was going to be here, so I'm very glad to have included this picture. Um, also, of course, uh, included in the Time Team uh, investigations was this very familiar face. That <laughs> um, and just some news for you, hot off the press, we are we, well, hopefully we have to reenact all of this this summer because we are going to go back and have another look uh, at the archaeology of shipbuilding uh, at Small Hides. Very exciting. So here is um, Gustav's plan from Archaeologia Cantiana, just showing where all these sites are in relation to each other and showing that changing sort of coastal landscape. So we have uh, Winchelsea down the bottom here, Bodium at the top, and Small Hive over here. And you can see all of that land reclamation across the Romney and the Wallen marshes from the medieval period onwards. So at Small Hive, we have uh, the National Trust's only working theatre, this is the Barn Theatre. Um, the theatre was set up by um, Edith Craig, Edie Craig, who's the daughter of Ellen Terry, a very famous uh, actress. And Edie herself was a, a suffragette and a political activist. And she drove um, setting up uh, the, the theatre at Small High, in memory of her, her mother. And the graffiti we have in the barn is amazing because it is the names of the people who came to act in the, in the plays. Uh, so it includes names like Sybil Thorndike, John Gielgud, so uh, incredibly important in theatre history. We do have ritual uh, protection marks at Small Hive as well. Um, on the left, we have some up on a fireplace in Small Hive Place. And on the right, we have a, a, a compass drawn design that looks like it went a bit wrong uh, in the priest house. Now, both of these are on recited bits of material. So the fireplace is not in situ. The panelling is also possibly not mm -hmm. in situ. So whether or not, oh my goodness, I'm going to go much faster. Whether or not these are... Um, originally related to the occupants of those houses is as yet unclear. We have ritual burn marks, those are the kind of things you apply to a building in the hopes that it won't burn down, so you burn a little bit as a kind of inoculation. We also have historic 16th century wall paintings. This is Ellen Terry's uh, sitting room and in the fireplace we found uh, another remnant of uh, sort of small size association with uh, ships and shipping. This is a shipping notice that's an order for wood uh, that would have come in in the 19th century it's being tucked away in the fireplace. These are the kinds of vessels that were being built in Small Hive uh, in the 16th century. This is Henry Day's Grand Mistress, just one of them, uh, from 1545, and this is shown on the Anthony Roll, uh, which is part of the British Library collection. More ships, and we're moving to our sort of final sites here. These are um, in the Church of St. Margaret's of Cliff at Dover, where there's an amazing collection of medieval ships inscribed uh, on the walls there. Interestingly, from our sort of uh, White Cliffs properties for the National Trust, we have no uh, recorded ship graffiti as yet, but I did want to have a quick look just for the last part of this talk about what we do have. Um, a lot of what we do have, a due acknowledgement to Montefice, that relates to kind of political uh, thoughts. Um, Dover is very much uh, how should we put this at the moment? On the front line, should we say? Um, we obviously have modern uh, examples. Um, here's Banksy, now uh, sadly covered up uh, and gone. The White Cliffs themselves are used as a, a way of, uh, sort of broadcasting essentially temporary uh, graffiti on the White Cliffs. So here we have uh, Led by Donkeys, Vera Lynn's 100th birthday, and 
the National Trust <coughs> themselves, so this was to celebrate 50 years of the Neptune uh, project. Within uh, our sort of estate, we have a lot of underground surviving structures, so this is the Fan Bay tunnels where we have a concentration of World War II uh, graffiti, including this chap who is running from what was the toilets uh, back into the tunnels, and you can see there's a bomb flying over his head, so a very graphic description there. Uh, more World War II graffiti in the Langdon tunnels. They've also been used for partying uh, and a lot of uh, urban explorers and artwork uh, going on down in there. Um, and this as well. So all kinds of uh, <laughs> uh, left on the walls in there. Um, this one is on the, the stair, uh, the Langdon stair path which goes down to the fort where it says be true to who you are. Um, it takes you down onto the beach there where we have the wreck of the SS Vulcan, which we'll be working on with Citizen uh, later this year, which is very exciting. And we also have two remaining uh, World War I searchlights. There were three, one of them has already fallen. There is one here, one here, and this is the Coast Guard shelter that Laura and Lawrence were sat in uh, at the beginning of the talk. So the graffiti in the tunnels has been recorded by uh, John Barker and his team from the White Cliffs. We have graffiti dating from the uh, construction there from uh, the early 1900s. We know that a unit from London was brought down especially to serve uh, in the tunnels. So this is a, a picture from Chris Doonan, again from the White Fist team, showing that team uh, very proudly there. We have some really interesting graffiti recorded in those tunnels, um, going down to the searchlights, very deeply incised. Quite a long walk down there, so once you went down there, you probably spent quite a while. Final site is our uh, most recent acquisition, which was Wonston Farm, you can see outlined in red. Um, it's a, a huge amount of military infrastructure surviving from World War II, an integral part of uh, the sort of machinery in that corner. Um, all kinds of graffiti uh, represented, including this one, which is believed to be uh, a picture of Hitler. Uh, and this is actually one of the less offensive pictures uh, from Monster, which is covered in the most filthy graffiti I can't even show you a picture of it. It's <laughs> um, so how do we share our findings? We've got a, a kind of bunch of suggestions here. Engraved on the walls of a secret chamber is actually quite appropriate for us. I'm working on the internet being involving cats. What we have to do is try to publish uh, where we found uh, graffiti and how we're so talking about it in our research. Um, in a variety of different open access uh, journals. Um, this summer, this is called Wise, one of the National Trust volunteers at the White Coast Museum costume and interpretive tours. Um, he is Captain Strange, uh, and he'll be in the Fan Bay tunnels from spring. Um, and there are, you know, the role of the volunteers in, in helping to sort of interpret these um, discoveries for uh, visitors and for specialists is it cannot be undersold. So uh, thank you very much, and I hope I get to start.